for is hypergeometric distributions. So we use hypergeometric distributions when we choose a, um, such things as like a starting lineup for a basketball game or when we choose a committee from a group of people. Okay, we've seen this before. We saw this with simply just like the choose function and we did it intuitively. Okay, what is like the main point here is like there cannot be any repetitions and this is because here's the check. Hypergeometric are dependent trials. This means that the probability um, after one event occurs, all the probabilities are going to change. So the probability of event two happening depends on the um, event one. And also, um, it contains two, basically, I would look at two different uh, groups of items. Okay, this is my little cheat for this. Formally, there is a... Um, there's an equation for the, the hypergeometric distribution. I'll write it out as you would see it. Times n minus a c r minus x. Okay. Um, and this is what it would be. So pretty much what we're looking at here is we're going to look at like first group. Okay. And then we're going to look at second group. So everybody left over. And... And um, we'll take a look at this, like, we'll embed it into example one, and then we'll go back to that uh, equation. So, for example, jury selection, uh, determine the probability distribution for the number of women on, like, a civil co court jury of a pool of um, eight men and ten women. And just a note, um, if you didn't know, juries have 12 people on them, okay? So juries have 12 people. Okay, so let's start this probability distribution. So let the random variable x, so let x denote uh, number of women on the jury. Okay, so there's a pool of eight, eight men and 10 women. So I'm going to make the chart as well. So we'll do x, then we'll do p of x. Now, there could be, no, there couldn't possibly be zero women on the jury because there's only, uh, there's only eight men. So minimally, there's going to be four women on the jury. You can see that. Okay. Or we can have five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. Eight. And I'm going to give myself actually lots of room. Four. I'll do this in two steps. Four. Here we go. Four, five, six, and then I'll draw another chart. So here are the two groups of people, okay? So group one is going to be women. So that's going to be our success. And group two is going to be men, and that's going to be our failure, okay? Well, not failure. Sorry, it's just going to be group two. So there are 10 women, and we're choosing four of them. Now, what are the leftovers? So there are eight men, and we choose... So this four, we have to choose 12 altogether. So we're going to choose all eight men. And that's going to be out of how many people? There are 18 people, and we're going to choose 12 of them. Okay, so that's the probability of choosing four women. Now, choosing five women, there are 10 women, we're going to choose five. There are eight men, we're going to choose seven. And it's there are 18 people and we're choosing 12. Remember, that's the total. We went over this when we did, um, I'll just put it on the side, the number of event A over the number of, um, the number of occurrences in the universal set. Now, um, six women on the jur jury. There are 10 women, we're going to choose six. There are eight men, we're going to choose, therefore, six. And there are 18 people and we're going to choose 12. Now, we have to keep going because we have to do the probability distribution of the entire, um, of every single outcome. So four, five, six, let's do seven, eight, we'll get up to nine. Oh, and then we'll get up to 10. So we'll just squeeze that in right here. Okay, so again, 
10 women choose seven, eight men, then we are left with choosing five, and 18 people choose 12. 10 women choose eight, eight men choose four, that's 12, and then um, there are 18 people and we're choosing 12 of them. 10 women choose nine, eight women choose three, and 18 choose 12. And finally, there's 10 women, we're gonna choose all 10. There's eight men, we're only gonna choose two out of 18 people and we're choosing 12. If we take a look at these patterns, I'm gonna just pick a random one, number seven. What is 10 plus eight? Well, that's 18. So 10 is gonna be the number of people in like, say group number one or like the, like the success group. And then eight is going to be uh, the number of people in group number two or the number of items in group number two. So that's like the second group. And then seven is how many we choose. And then five is going to be um, how many we want to choose minus that seven. Because if you take a look at seven plus five, that actually equals 12. So there are patterns in here. Okay, so this is the probability distribution. This takes into account every single different outcome. If you did put a three and a two and a one, the probability of those are just zero, zero, and zero. There are not enough women to choose from in order to like have enough men and women uh, if you only have three women or only two, only one, or only zero. Okay, now, what is the expected number of women on the jury? And I'm just going to squeeze this in here. Okay, I do this a little bit intuitively. So the expected number of women on the jury. Well, out of all these people, what's the probability that you're a woman? Well, I get, sorry, 10 out of 18. So 10 out of 18 women, or of these people are women, and we're actually choosing 12. So... I would do 10 out of 18 are women and then times 12, which is basically like the number of trials is very, very similar to that. And I get six and two thirds. So you're expected to have six and two thirds women on a 12, on a 12 uh, member jury. Okay. And again, this formula you don't have to actually formally use, just know that this is the first group, okay? This is the second group. So we have A and we have N minus A because A and plus N minus A will equal the N and X plus the R minus X is gonna equal the R.